ancient alien extraterrestrials misinterpreted as gods. Well, we know that the ancient Greeks had their pantheon of gods, the gods of Olympus. They were supposedly from extraterrestrial origins and they were worshipped as gods. And recently we found uh, articles that I've uploaded for you concerning China, Korea, Japan and uh, extraterrestrials landing in those areas around 2400 BC, giving them uh, wisdom, knowledge about various things, agriculture, medicine, and they were supposedly tall, beautiful, with long hair. And of course, we have the same type of uh, artifacts from South America, things looking like extraterrestrials with uh, astronaut suits. So these are ancient aliens from the skies. We know that even the Native Americans talk about their sky gods, the Anu, just like uh, the same name as Anunnaki from the Sumerians. So what are the definitions of God and those of an alien? No one can say that these two terms cannot be combined or that a similar meaning does not define them. God certainly is not from Earth, these gods that is, these extraterrestrials. Extraterrestrials occurring or existing beyond the Earth's atmosphere, a being from beyond the Earth's atmosphere means extraterrestrial. Now, it's not intended, since it's evidently not necessary to spread the possibility that gods, quote-unquote, have an extraterrestrial origin, and it does not involve in giving up a person's belief or principles. Some researchers even, researchers even suggest that possibility, such possibility points to the contrary. It's very likely that our civilization originated from another civilization that inhabited Earth much before history tells us, according to texts, God, quote unquote, is a supernatural entity, creator of the universe with absolute power over it. Aliens can be defined as being strangers to our planet, of course. Today, we don't have or have seen evidence of the existence of neither of these two aspects. We have ancient texts that mention both God and extraterrestrial beings, but in different ways. So it's up to the beliefs of each person where these aspects are divided or where they meet. But then again, our, belief, our beliefs are a matter of faith, not evidence. Almost all religions speak of mysterious beings, messengers, gods, etc. Even the Christian religion mentions the existence of creatures with the ability of flight. Now, usually these gods or mess, we even have, if, you, if you'd like to read something very romantic, and uh, oh, it's only a few pages, in the Old Testament, the, the book of Tobit. I think I have uh, Tobit in my playlist, if you want to listen to it. Uh, and, of course, the Archangel uh, Raphael came to Tobit and his family as a person. And at the end, he told them, write everything down, in other words, for future generations, all that you've experienced and all that I'm telling you, and so that it would benefit, of course, us. We are the future generations of that. And he turned, in, he turned into his uh, real form as an Archangel and then lifted uh, up into the heavens. He ascended into the heavens. He says, all the time that I was with you, I pretended to eat and everything like a human being, but I was not eating, I was just pretending. And uh, he had changed form into a human form. So that's one of the uh, aspects of uh, angels in the Holy Bible, in the Old Testament. So usually these God's messengers depicted with wings, although they don't have wings, although it's never nearly, it never clarified, specific, specified how these beings managed to fly. Of course, it's, it's a miracle. Now, ancient Indian texts suggest that theories about flying beings and mysterious objects, their vimana, their UFOs, could actually turn out to be true. Religious theories state that a god or several gods are responsible for the creation of uh, life on planet Earth. And these theories are reflected in ancient sacred texts such as the Bible, Popo Vuh, and the Torah. But even before these ancient texts, mysterious beings were described in ancient Egypt, in Greece, and other ancient civilizations around the globe. All of these stories speak of beings who descended from the skies to create mankind and civilization. Mysteriously, researchers have found evidence that these sky beings or sky gods came from constellations such as the Pleiades, Orion, or Sirius. Ancient astronaut theory suggests that ancient gods mentioned in these sacred texts are in fact 
extraterrestrial beings with highly advanced technologies who were misinterpreted as gods, quote unquote, by ancient mankind. Now imagine if we traveled today to ancient Egypt 2,300 years ago, 3,000 years ago, arriving in jet airplanes and helicopters with our tablets and our smartphones and laser weapons and talking to each other with our little, uh, you know, Bluetooths. How would ancient people in Egypt interpret our technology? Would they consider us as ordinary humans? It would make us stand out from the rest, giving us a notion of power, simply because ancient humans back then would not recognize our technology, they would not understand it, thus it's very likely that ancient people would categorize us as gods who came in flying birds with wings, producing smoke, fire, and extreme noise upon landing. So much like the descriptions of ancient gods in Mesoamerica and Asia, when feathered serpents or dragons arrive from the stars, creating chaos and havoc upon landing. And today, as science advances, theology is not staying behind. The Catholic Church, for example, released a statement where they suggest that their beliefs do not go against astronomy and the possibility that there is life elsewhere in the universe. So we need to ask ourselves, is it possible that some ancient texts that speak of gods, quote unquote, and messengers from the heavens, quote unquote, are actually misinterpretations that need to be reanalyzed and rethought. So it might just turn out that we have missed small details in history that could eventually answer many questions that are being raised both by religion and science alike. This is from Ancient Coded on Humans Be Free. Please leave your comments and thank you for your support. Kindly support my Patreon account. The daily posts are five videos daily and they are totally different from what I have on my YouTube channel. Thank you so much for your support and that you find all my content so interesting. You'll find the Patreon account details in the description box below.